CMA dish machines and a CMA school of training. This instructional video will be covering the model 180 UC installation and servicing of the high temp under counter dishwasher. In the event one of your customers or somebody breaks off or damages the switch cover for any one of these the switches at the top of the dishwasher they can be replaced independently of the entire switch. The two switches that are identical are the start cycle switch and the on off switch which would be part numbers 421.41 and the drain switch is part number 3481.01. These part numbers are located in the parts manual and can be ordered from CMA dish machines or your chemical supplier and parts distributors. Please remember all of our manuals are available at the CMA website at www.cmadishmachines.com slash products dot h t m l. On the right hand side of the control tray we have the auto start relay. In the center of the dishwasher control drawer you will find the main power terminal. If the unit does not have the chemical dispensers installed, we supply two connection points for your detergent and your rinse signals. Again, blue is for the rinse aid, red is for the detergent. And this over here is the ice cube relay for your safety temp feature which will not allow the dishwasher to go into the final rinse unless the temperature for the thermostat has been reached. We have the temperature display as well as the transformer which steps down the power from 110 volts to 10 volts to operate the display. Remember that the wash tank temperature will always be displayed and the final rinse temperature will only be displayed during the final rinse. The wash tank temperature should be set for 150 to 160 degrees and the final rinse should be set between 180 and 195 degrees. For convenience and display purposes I have removed the rinse aid and detergent pump from the dishwasher. Located at the front of the dishwasher and the front of the assembly you will find the adjustments for the detergent and the rinse aid. These control the speed of the detergent and the rinse aid pumps to dispense the proper amount of chemical. Please remember these pumps are not programmed at the factory and need to be adjusted by your chemical provider. The pump system assembly has two chemical pumps located on the side of the machine through the access panel that we saw earlier. If the pumps need to be serviced themselves, you can simply loosen the two locking uh, clamps and take the pump off for service. When you put it back on, all you do is put it into place and push until you hear a click and the pumps are locked into place. The blue line is for the rinse aid, the red line is for your detergent, and they are carried to the back of the dishwasher through hoses that are fed out the back of the machine and already are pre-attached to the rinse aid injection point by the vacuum breaker as well as the back bulkhead fitting for the wash tank. And you'll have two tube stiffeners at the end of each line so that chemical pumps stay primed and you do not lose the tubes from your chemical bucket or one gallon jug. Please remember that these chemical pumps cannot be field installed. They must be factory installed at CMA dish machines. They do not have the wiring harnesses available to them. They need to be installed here at the factory before shipping. Here we have the half inch stainless steel DEMA valve which is being used in the Model 180 UC. To disassemble the valve and replace the diaphragm, remove the cover. You will see the solenoid base plate, you'll see the coil and the wire connections. First remove the screw holding the coil in place. Remember, 
Below the coil and the base plate in between the two is a spacer that is required to keep the coil a specific height off the valve. Remove that first. Here we see the valve disassembled with the coil off the valve and you can see the spacer that I was talking about. This needs to remain when you put it back together again between the coil and the mounting plate. Then simply remove the other three screws to be able to remove the diaphragm. Here we have the valve apart with the mounting plate off and to get to the diaphragm simply remove this top cover where you'll see the plunger and the spring and the diaphragm itself. This is the diaphragm that can be replaced. Remember, this valve will always come with a spare diaphragm because it is supplied by the manufacturer and that's how the valve will come standard. Remove any debris that may have been caught up underneath, replace if necessary. To install the new diaphragm or to put the valve back together, simply repeat the process backwards. Take the diaphragm and put it in place. Take your, cat, your diaphragm cover, your spring first. If you want to add more pressure to the valve to hold back higher pressure water, some buildings pressures vary, stretch the spring just a little, place it inside the cover, take your plunger that has the tip pointy end that goes down to the valve and the other end that goes to the spring, place it back in place and then reinstall it on the valve and put the mounting bracket back into place. Here we have the spare replacement diaphragm kit from CMA. It is provided with a replacement diaphragm, spring and plunger. When reassembling the valve, remember to put the screw in first, the clear spacer second, and then place it on the valve, keeping the wire connections towards the conduit opening. Now that we have the coil in place, reinstall the other <laughs> screws. The valve is reassembled. Remember, always keep the cover in place when in service. To remove the drain pump, at the back of the dishwasher to convert the 180 UC to a gravity drain machine, the first thing you want to do is remove or cut the tie wrap holding the drain hose in place, which is connected to the drain pump. The drain pump is located at the bottom of the machine, bolted down to the base. You want to remove the cover for the electrical connection. After removing the cover, separate the two wires coming from the dishwasher. Remove the two blue wire nuts, separate the wires, and put the wire nuts back on the two wires. Wrap them up individually with electrical tape first, and then I prefer to put them both together and put more electrical tape holding them together. Please remember, these wires will always be live.